जय श्री राम जय सिया राम ओके यू नो चेतन एंड आई हैव नेवर डन दिस बिफोर दैट्स राइट सो इट्स ग्रेट फन सो यू रिटन अ होल रामा सीरीज एंड यू बिन डूइंग माइथोलॉजी दैट्स फ्रॉम द वेरी बिगिनिंग एंड टुडे स्पेशली लाइक ड्यूरिंग द टेम्पल इनग्रेशन द होल कंट्री वॉज इन अ फ्रेंडी ऑलमोस्ट वेन दैट वॉज हैपनिंग हाउ इज दैट फॉर यू um actually my wife and i uh, shivani she is here we were lucky to actually be in ayodhya on uh, the 22nd and it was it was truly a wonderful experience um uh, and uh, we've produced a documentary on the temple on the ramjan bhumi uh, ji temple uh, it is the story of the temple from the beginning from the birth of lord ram till now uh and uh, i think the things that one learned through the journey of that uh, you know one of the people we interviewed for that documentary was uh, kk mohammad saab i'm sure many of you would have heard of uh, kk mohammad a legendary historian and archaeologist and uh, he made this wonderful statement while we were uh, recording him he said that uh, this is actually not a hindu muslim issue it's an indian foreigner issue because babar was from uzbekistan and he said i am an indian muslim what do i have to do with him uh and i thought that was a very beautiful way of looking at it so you're saying like the moguls weren't uh, we call the moguls moguls they call themselves temurid uh they were they were turks they okay they didn't look like uh, uh prithviraj kapoor or no ritik roshan no to us they would have looked chinese uh but they were actually from central asia from the steppe lands and jodha didn't look like ashwara rai chola jodha no, that they quite likely they would have <laughs> <laughs> okay uh chola is a very much indian no jodha jodha in jodha akbar when you talk of hrithik looking like akbar i thought that jodha look like ashwara rai or okay, not okay this is turning into a full history thing but because there are questions on whether emperor akbar's wife was actually jodha uh okay. there is there those who say it was probably harkal bai remember the name jodha comes from jodhpur but she was supposed to be the daughter of uh, the king of amer so uh, we'll have to get that was probably cinematic license we'll have to get <laughs> ashutosh gwarikar here next time let's not get into specific movies your your interest in mythology it was there from the very beginning from because from me i think i was like the typical 90s kid for us there were two references for the ramayana at least for me one we had a book in school hindi book which was rectangular shape there was only one book which was, like normally books are actually which all, all books ramayan yeah let books, me i'm sorry i'm ah, sorry it was the ramayan okay. we we studied okay. it in school wow. in army okay. public school in delhi all books are rectangles i take that back but what we call today landscape mode right. it was in landscape mode and we uh, we i read about the ramayan there and then after that it was the serial arun govil that was we all understood about uh, you know the whole story and everything and that was it is but for you obviously mythology holds a lot bigger meaning because i know when you write a book on something you need to be very involved with it and you written book after book after book about indian mythology well before it became i don't know um i wouldn't say trendy but main as mainstream as it is now uh was it always an interest yeah it always was so uh uh i grew up in a very uh uh very religious very traditional family my grandfather my paternal grandfather was a pandit in varanasi at vishwanath ji like a priest yeah yeah, okay. yeah. he could do the pran pratishtha puja actually uh and he was also a teacher at uh, bhu uh, banaras hindu university my uh, maternal grandmother was also a teacher my parents studied in the hindi medium but uh, they wanted to send their four of us siblings they wanted us uh, they wanted us to go to schools uh, that were way beyond their income and social class so we went to uh, cathedral and john conan school in in mumbai uh, i had friends whose shoes cost more than my father's salary uh, and uh, then i went to Zav- all of us we went to different colleges i went to zavier's college and then mba from iim calcutta i think we were in the same batch you were a i was c um so actually we had in a way both worlds we at home it was completely traditional uh, but at uh, 
uh, at uh, the uh, school and college it was what you would call modern india yeah. okay so we are the best Chalo of both worlds next level ke sawalon pe jaate hain okay kyunki ye topic theek hai ram rajya ki baat ho rahi hai theek hai hindi mein bhi baat kar sakte hain avp to waise hi koi kathinai nahi so ram rajya मेरे को एक बात बताइए टू अ ले पर्सन और टू अ यंग पर्सन जिसको जिसने मतलब पहली बार या ज़्यादा नहीं सुना इस कॉन्सेप्ट को राम राज्य को दो इंटरप्रिटेशन हो सकते हैं एक तो ये कि राम राज्य इज दी आइडियल गवर्नेंस लाइक आइडियल जैसे क्योंकि राम इज एसोसिएट आइडियल्स और राम राज्य है लाइक इट इज़ कॉमनली यूज एक्सप्रेशन कि इट्स लाइक परफेक्ट इट्स द बेस्ट टाइम्स इट वॉज द बेस्ट टाइम एवरीथिंग इज बीन गवर्न रियली वेल एवरीबडी इज़ ऑनेस्ट देर इज नो करप्शन दैट्स राम राज्य बट राम राज्य कैन लिटरली ऑल्सो मीन देर इज अ किंग कॉल्ड राम एंड इट्स हिज किंगडम द होल फाइट वॉज फॉर द किंगडम दैट्स द रामायण स्टोरी तो आप आपके लिए रा, राम राज्य है क्या लाइक वॉट डज लेट्स फर्स्ट अंडरस्टैंड बिफोर वी से इज राम राज्य द आइडियल थिंग वॉट इज राम राज्य हाउ शुड अ पर्सन हु इज नॉट रिटर्न माइथोलॉजी बुक्स और हु इज नॉट एन एक्सपर्ट इन द सब्जेक्ट हाउ डू दे अंडरस्टैंड इट Okay, so pop quiz for all of you. How many of you have actually read any of the versions of the Ramayana outside of in the television? NCRT, series? Anyone NCRT, has, yeah? NCRT, NCRT. Okay, that's a summary. <laughs> in which one have you read? Valmiki Ramayana, Ram Charit Manas, Kamba Ramayana, Ram Charit Manas. In any of the versions that you've read, has Ram Raj been described in detail? Yeah. Anyone? Isn't that kind of interesting? Okay, it's one of the things people I noticed. People can't see. So, so the people on TV actually, cannot see. Actually, for people on TV didn't see it. Most of them said no. Okay. It's actually not been described in detail. Hmm. Most of the Ramayana versions that are written, from the original Valmiki Ramayana to the Ramchandra Manas, Kamba Ramayana, actually uh, chronicles the journey of Lord Ram. Ramayana, the word itself means the journey of Ram, right? uh and it's kind of intriguing because i mean of course you find differences like lakshman rekha is not there in the original valmiki ramayan for example but the ram rajya itself is actually not discussed in so much detail right it's discussed in other texts like the yog vashisht for example which is a pure philosophical philosophical text and i found this interesting because much of the discussions of the Ra ram rajya actually happen in other texts I think the Ramayana actually tells us what creates the kind of leader who can build a Ram Rajya, right? A leader who goes through personal suffering but still reacts to it in a positive way. Ravan went through personal suffering, and his reaction was, "The world hurt me. I will freaking burn the world down," right? Whereas Lord Ram's reaction was, "The world hurt me, but I will still behave with nobility." i will give to the world what the world didn't give to me i will give nobility i'll give honor i'll give grace even if the world didn't behave with me that way that leads to the kind of leader right i have a theory that maybe there are various different versions of the ram rajya because we are supposed to make up our own interpretation of what ram rajya should be Aap and there are various texts which explore this right what is it for you for me there is this there's this lovely sanskrit line which i put actually in one of my books राम राज वासी प्रोचर यस्व आई ट्रांसलेट डोंट वरी प्लीज प्रोचर यस्व ते शिम न्यायाथम युद्धस्व सर्वेशु समम चर परिपाल दुर्बल विद्धि धर्म वरम प्रोचर यस्व ते शिम राम राज वासी व ट्रांसलेट्स एज यू लिव इन द किंगडम ऑफ राम होल्ड योर हेड हाई प्रोचर प्रोटेक्ट द वीक नो दैट धर्म इज अबाव ऑल फाइट फॉर जस्टिस ट्रीट ऑल एज इक्वल hold your head high you live in the kingdom of ram to me this encapsulates a beautiful way of looking at what ram rajya should be treat all as equal fight for justice protect the weak know that dharma dharma is not religion dharma is beyond religion right dharma is what's the right way to be these are treat the philosophical all. discussions that our ancestors had many kings used to claim to be following the path of ram hmm. so the the vijayanagar emperors or the cholas or many others would say that the 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 mauryas the guptas they would speak of ram rajya as a concept they would speak of what his principles would be so it was it was actually symbolic in a way so it's concept it's not <coughs> literal 
कि देर इज अ किंग एंड अ किंगडम एंड अ मोनाकी इट्स नॉट लाइक दैट वेन वी से It, and if, if you're means, asking because if, we say ram ram when we say ram ram it means are you well like it's it's a sign yeah. of good so because that word is also used to describe something good so yeah. good times ram rajya matlab acha rajya ho raha it's what a ideal society and ideal state should be and each our ancestors never said that this is the only way if you don't follow this you'll burn in hell for eternity no every age has its own conception of what mm. ideal should be uh and every person has their own conception of what the ideal should be right and right. we have the freedom to discover that right there is this whole uh, it's more a philosophy which has been there in many parts of the world that the state and church it used to be state and church but broadly speaking state and religion should, should be, be separate, separate. Yeah. separate. that's a one. western concept huh? it's because actually, there is a concept whether yeah. it's west east i'll i'll tell you where that emerged from because actually in the west the church did actually start interfering in the temporal world yes right? uh in india that was that was never so uh so india actually the temples always served its own purpose the king served its own purpose his own or her own purpose we had queens who ruled in their own name uh and uh, the educational institutions also had their own independent purpose and they all had independent power we never had this thing ki this guy is the absolute ruler and you need to have that sep- this like you'll notice in india you don't need uh, to be an atheist to prove that you are scientific it was never a concept in india right because we didn't have this dichotomy is that you have to give up this to be this that you have to uh, hate another country to prove your patriotism you have to hate all other religions to prove that you love your own religion we never had those concepts uh loving something doesn't automatically mean i have to hate something else i i'm a lord shiva worshipper that doesn't mean i have to hate other gods or goddesses or other religions ah we never said that right mm. so you didn't need that separation you'll notice in the west for example many scientists had had spoken at the oxford union uh, recently or the oxford union debate and we were debating on god actually and i obviously spoke on the side of god from the hindu way of life Uh, we actually won the debate in a place like oxford oxford is a kind of place where jnu is a dangerous right wing university right and we actually won the debate out there and the point i made was actually you don't have a problem with the concept of god when the foundation of it is that you have to hate anything which questions god where does the problem with science come right uh, that if science allows you to question your god but in our way there's no problem question in we have no translation for the english word blasphemy in vedic sanskrit mm-hmm. in the bhagavad gita lord krishna tells arjun in the 18th chapter i have given you knowledge most profound now think about it and do what you think is right we are not just uh, allowed to question we are encouraged to question the divine himself or herself right yeah so then this thing of this separation is not really needed so I'll tell you where it's coming from, it, it, where, and where it gets a little confusing. कहाँ पे थोड़ा confusion हो जाता है? We have laws, we have a constitution. Now, religion influences society. Society के समाज को देख के laws बनते हैं. Each society has its own laws, and they make their own laws and constitution, and which laws and constitution make up a state. So, in some ways, they, that's one way to look at it. Religion to society, society to laws, laws to state. That means they are linked. and you are saying there is nothing wrong in religion and state being linked do you do you not see any like put like how should we make our laws how should we make a constitution should we therefore then drive from religion should we make them independently with legal experts keeping interests of justice equality uh, freedoms should we rights should it be done on that basis or we have excellent texts from the past we use karke we can make i'm i'm not okay. judging yeah, i'm just sure, saying sure. so look um i'm sure many have heard of acharya chanakya out here anyone has read arthashastra or chanakya niti anyone damn oh one person who 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 read someone raise their hand out there okay this should be a part of our education system right the arthashastra or the chanakya niti there are in our traditional way in the mauryan empire was the largest indian empire ever there are two types of states one is the chanakyan state and the other is the ashokan state the chanakyan state 
was a minimal but very effective state. So it would do a few things. It wasn't a libertarian state. It wasn't that I would give up everything, no. It would enforce its will, but only on a few things, right? And the rest, it left to society. Why? Because their concept, Chanakya's concept was, if the state starts interfering in too many things, you naturally end up having chaos, right? Because some things should be left to society. The Ashokan state actually was the exact opposite, that it would be an expansionary state. It would interfere in many things. The first Indian state that tried to promote vegetarianism, for example, was actually the Ashokan state, right? Uh, I am a believer that we should have a Chanakyan state, okay? Like a few things, law and order. Like we have vigilantism, people breaking things. Boss, the Chanakyan state would come down on them like a ton of bricks, right? Uh, infrastructure, regulating trade, it wouldn't get moralizing. So the Chanakyan state, for example, allowed uh, uh, even prostitution, but regulated it, right? But it was, it would do a few things, do it well, leave the rest to society, right? Uh, the Ashokan state would interfere in too many things. What that does makes the state weak uh, because it cannot do its core jobs effectively because it's too distracted. Even more importantly, what Chanakya said rightly, Chanakya had a, had a fundamental uh, suspicion of the state. He said, you cannot control corruption in the state. And he'd actually used a very interesting line. He said, trying to control corruption in bureaucrats is like trying to control how much water a fish drinks while breathing. He said, there's no way you can know, right? So the only thing to do is keep it as small as possible so they have fewer opportunities, right? I would argue we don't have a Chanakyan state. We actually have an Ashokan state. It interferes in too many things, which is none of its business, right? And it doesn't do its core things properly. That's the kind of state we need to have. And things which should be left to society, like who I want to marry, or what I want to eat, that's society's job, yeah? And if, say, if I want to, uh, you know, there's a prevention of superstition act in Maharashtra, okay? You can argue whether it's good or bad. But if I want to do it, then I should do it the old Indian way, which is go village to village, talk and convince people. It's harder work, right? I shouldn't have the right to go convince some bureaucrat or the court and mandate it down. Because then the state is getting involved in things which is none of its business. Interestingly, among the things that are discussed in the Ram Charit Manas mm -hmm. for what state taxation policies would be is very similar to this. Keep the state minimal. So actually, one of the things who said Ram Charit Manas out here, one of the things that was discussed was actually the state should not tax too much. The state should tax a bit like a bee taking honey from a flower. Does it just about right for what the bee needs and leave the flower alone? To cap that is actually the traditional Indian way. Okay. While Which is I, not what our present yeah, yeah. state is. I, I love tradition. And I, when I got married, I wanted it to be as traditional as possible. I celebrate festivals. I love tradition. But tell me one thing. And again, it's because it's a forum of thoughts and ideas. Is something of higher value just because it's old? Because it's, this is how it used to be. This is how kingdoms were run then. So that's better. Or should we modernize based on what we've learned now? There were things like the caste system. There were things like sati, which were pretty much put down. Now that's, you could say, it's tradition, right? But we realize that it's not causing good to society. In fact, it's causing a lot of harm, and we reformed. So how do you, I guess, how do you make a society where there is reform possible, but there is also no, people who are reforming are not seen as disrespecting tradition. It doesn't mean that we are like trying to say that, you know, this is all bad. But at the same time, we, you know, like how do you keep that balance? And you know, is it good because it's old? And how you know, old should this, it be? There's this wonderful line I'd read somewhere. Traditions that last are experiments that worked, right? Uh, so if a tradition is still serving some purpose right now, then perhaps there's some value. That doesn't mean you respect all traditions. There are some traditions which should be questioned, like the caste system, right? I openly question the caste system. Uh, on my book covers, I don't even use my surname. And you know why I don't do that, because it's a caste surname, right? It's my own small statement against 
the caste system. I speak against the caste system uh, through all of my books, right? But it's, uh, in our, it's there in our... You can... Are there... No. Are there... Do you find any controversy? You can Google. You won't find any controversies around me, right? Because I say this, but I say it in a polite way. I say it uh, in a way that doesn't generate controversy. So should some, some traditions be questioned? Of course, yes, right? Uh, the key point is how you question it. Mm. You can question the caste system by using our ancient scriptures, which didn't have the caste. We didn't have caste, by the way. So you right? go even more old. Prior to 6th, <laughs> 7th century... We didn't have it. No. I, it you was, probably it, know better. I really don't it know. It wasn't answer. fixed. It wasn't hard, hardwired, right? And in fact, Dr. Ambedkar himself wrote it in his book, Who Were the Shudras, right? From textual evidence that perhaps wasn't uh, rigid at all. Uh, now, you can use this to question, you can, if you want to speak of transgenders, for example, you can either use some American or Western example, which people may not like, or you can uh, quote a wonderful example, the one who spoke of Ramcharit Manas will recognize this. There's this wonderful line, Purush Napunsak Nari, Vajiva Chara Charakoi, Sarv Bhav Baja Kapataji, Mohi Param Priyasoi. Any man, any woman, any transgender, any living being, any plant, any animal, you give up deceit, love each other, come to me, and you're my people. Uh, who said this? Anyone wants to take a guess? You want to take a guess? Who said this? No. <laughs> who said this? It's a liberal line. Any man, any woman, any transgender, any living being, any plant, any animal, give up deceit, love each other, come to me, you're my people. Who said it? Any ideas? Doesn't look like it. Can you want to guess? Uh, I will be wrong, so I will not guess. Lord Ram. I, I would have guessed that, believe Lord it or not. Lord Ram, you would have guessed it. I would have, Lord that would Ram have said this. a pure guess though. Okay. Now, if you fight for transgender rights by quoting Lord Ram, why should there be any controversy? Right? The same thing can be done in a polite way. So, you are saying for every reform, there is something in our text that you will find. You can find it. You will find some They're supporting there. evidence. There is also another question. There is a belief that religion is a private matter. Some people believe that. Again, it's, there's no right, it's a private matter. Like we pray at home, we do celebrate festivals, or it's not a public thing you wear out there in public. Whereas there are those who believe, you know, this is who I am, this is my religion, I'm very proud of it, why should I not display it? Why should I not, you know, publicly celebrate it? I'm not again judging, they are both theories which different people believe in. Where do you put this? Because is making religion something, a public display of religion, is it, has it got its pros and cons or like, what's like, where in the spectrum are you? Again, this religion is a private matter, again, comes from the West. And it comes from, uh, uh, you know, the separate, the, that thing that you said of separation of church and state. Uh, this again becomes important when I feel that me being proud of my religion means I need to force it on you. I need to convert you or I need to... If you don't have that attitude, then what difference does it make? Well, In India, religion has usually not been a private matter. We celebrate it publicly. Festivals are celebrated publicly. Much of our art is actually around religious, uh, uh, religious figures. And it doesn't cause dissonance because we are not trying to force our religion on anyone else. Mm -hmm. You know, and in fact, the beauty of the Indian way is that we will celebrate the religion of others openly, right? So, uh, I lived in London for four and a half years. I gave this uh, uh, example of there of uh, that in my puja room at home. I have, and of course I have a murti of Lord Shiva, right, in the center. And I have murtis of other gods and goddesses, Lord Ram, uh, Sita Ma, uh, Kali Ma, all of them. But I have uh, marks and symbols of other faiths as well. My wife is a Jain, so we have a uh, Rishabdev and uh, Mahavir Ji. Uh, we have Guru Nanak Dev, we have Gautam Buddha, we have a Star of David, we have a lovely Byzantine painting of Jesus Christ, Mother Mary, uh, we have the Kaaba, we have all of this in our puja room. Now, even in a place like the UK, which you think is liberal, people found it odd. Are but what religion are you following? If I say this in India, no one finds it odd, right? Because it's natural in our way, right? We, we don't just tolerate each other, we actively embrace each other. Then in this, why do I need to keep my religion? I wear my religion literally on my sleeve. I wear an Om Namah Shivaya Kada. 
I wear well, a Rudraksh I, I mala. Guess, I guess the issue can come if you're if you're one country and that national identity, something becomes above that national identity, which is your religious identity. And if there are, if it's especially a country with multiple religions, then it can cause some divisions. No, the country has to be above everything else. That is clear. Hmm. Desh Sarvopari. That, even, even that, that I think has to be very, very clear. Okay. Country above everything else. Okay. Okay. Uh, Let me quote Lord Ram again. Yes. Janani jan bhumisha swarga dapi gariyasi. Mother and motherland are greater than heaven. Okay. Lord Ram said this. Okay. That's nice. What about politics and religion? It's inevitable. I think it is inevitable because politics mirrors society. That's my personal view. If people care about religion above everything else, then I think as a politician, it almost becomes your job to kind of respond to that in some way, right? You can't just say, because you are representative of people. So I think it's a mix of what society wants. But at the same time, are there any downsides of politics mixing and religion? Uh, yeah, I normally don't comment on, on politics. Uh, I'm talking a generic yeah. concept. I'm not talking specific. But look, at a, at a broad level, uh, will religious symbolism be used in politics? It happens in every country. Uh, I lived in the UK. King Charles was just uh, uh, anointed king. Uh, and uh, the scepter, if I'm not mistaken, actually was anointed with uh, waters of uh, the Church of Holy Sepulchre. Right, from Jerusalem. Uh, uh, there are uh, bishops who are members of the House of Lords, their equivalent of the Rajya Sabha. Uh, they give rights to all other religions, but at their core they are, and many of their senior leaders do actually celebrate their Christian uh, uh, you know, uh, roots, which is fair. Uh, Barack Obama, when uh, he took... Uh, Sorry to... Oh. I'm, I'm not saying that politicians should not uh, follow a religion. They should. I'm saying no, when, they it, celebrated, when it becomes a part of their campaign. They celebrate it publicly. Now, that's, that's the point I'm making. They celebrate it publicly, right? Hmm. Uh, which is okay. Okay. Right? Uh, but if it's used to create divisions, then it's not okay. Okay. Right? Fair enough. Uh, but celebrating your religion publicly, this is done in every and all liberal countries okay. uh, uh, as well. UK, US. Well, the UK everywhere. has elected a Hindu prime minister. Who read, who read from the Corinthian in the Bible for the anointment of, uh, uh, for the, you know, in the crowning of King Charles. So, like I said, the roots were, and there's nothing wrong. I, I don't, I'm not belittling that. That's good, right? Mm. Uh, because it doesn't mean that just because they are celebrating a religion that they are hating another religion. That's where one should draw the line. This thing that all politicians have to give up uh, a public celebration of their religion uh, is usually imposed in Marxist countries. Mm. Where I would argue Marxism itself behaves like a religion, actually. Like a jealous religion. So all other religions <laughs> have to be removed. Nothing is allowed. Yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah, I guess, uh, I mean, anything else you want to say about... Uh, no, and if you have time, if you have yeah. some questions have from a, the audience, have, happy have, to we answer. We have time for one question, maybe. Anybody has a question? Keep no. it short, because we literally have one minute. Yes, sir, raise this hand first. So... Um, if there's a mic that can go around, I'll be happy to answer. Uh, hi, this is Ajay Mittal here. I just wanted to ask, there is a bit of a controversy whether Uttar Ramayana was actually part of Ramayana because some of the characteristics of Rama demonstrated there were in conflict with what was there in the rest of the Ramayana. What is your view on that? Good question. You really know your stuff. Yes, uh, there are scholars who say Uttarkhand is probably not a part of the original Valmiki Ramayana. Uh, part of, and one of the key things is actually the meter changes. I'm sure you're aware all Sanskrit poetry was in a particular meter. Uh, so, I think, I would agree that perhaps Uttar Kant is not a part of the original Ramayana, later interpolation, uh, but who can be sure, man? Uh, this, this is something for the scholars. Yeah. I think we don't have time. Amish, okay. you've been fabulous. You didn't avoid or dodge any question. You gave deep insights and knowledge. And I think I learned a lot today. So once again, Jai Shri Ram and thank you for coming. Jai Shri Ram, Jai Shri Ram. <laughs>
आइडियाज ऑफ इंडिया ये है आइडियाज ऑफ इंडिया एबीपी नेटवर्क्स आइडियाज ऑफ इंडिया